if we think something bad may have just happened and we just let people go, the community is not going to accept that from their police department. So we have to act. I'd be damned if I will let anybody violate our rights. We're going to have no choice but to look to a federal civil rights investigation. And that brings us to today. Trial now underway for the federal lawsuit claiming Greenville police used excessive force when arresting Tario Anderson, an autistic man. 7 News reporter Addie Hampton has been live at the courthouse throughout the day with the very latest on the case. And Addie, how it's changing the way police respond. Yeah, Gordon, court has rested for the day, and it has been interesting throughout the courtroom all day long. Earlier today, lawyers for the Anderson family, the plaintiffs, wanted to put Tario Anderson himself on the witness stand to testify. Now, the judge ultimately ruled that he was incompetent to testify and decided against that motion. Now, the plaintiffs had rested for the day, and interestingly enough, the judge also said that he initially was going to make a straight ruling after hearing the plaintiff's case. Uh, basically saying that the plaintiffs didn't have enough evidence and he didn't need to hear what the defense had to say. Now he decided against that and that's where we're going to pick up tomorrow with the defense putting their witnesses on the stand. Now this case has sparked a debate across the upstate and a motion to get more mental health training within the police departments and now there's even a bill in the state house. This is the cell phone video played in federal court Monday. We first showed it to you days after Tario Anderson, an autistic man, was tased and arrested on Christmas Eve 2014. Our cameras aren't allowed inside federal court, but the jury made up of seven women and five men are now charged with deciding if officers used excessive force here, says family attorney Michana Talley. They should pay attention very carefully to the city's position on what has happened and what could potentially happen in the future. Greenville officers were on Sullivan Street investigating reports of shots fired when they saw Tario Anderson. Police tell us the officers told Anderson to stop and Anderson ignored their commands and ran away. That's when officers tased him twice and arrested him. The solicitor cleared the officers in 2015. This case has uh, kind of, you know, helped bring to light the need for de-escalation training. Says mental health advocate Peyton Blau. He's worked alongside the Greenville police since the Anderson case to implement a crisis intervention team specifically designed to handle the mentally ill and potentially unsafe situations. Across the board, uh, we know that this type of training should try, try to help avoid somebody with autism getting tased or having uh, some type of interaction with the police that doesn't come out well. But the 40 hour course is currently only taught in about half of South Carolina counties, something Blau is trying to change through a bill currently in committee. And this bill would actually mandate all 46 counties uh, receive this type of training on an ongoing basis. Now, this bill also advocates for restoration centers to be built in cities across the state, essentially giving police a third option to take those that have been arrested that have a mental illness other than the police department, the jail, or a hospital. Now, interestingly enough, this was one of the reasons that Miss Anderson, Tario's mother, said that she had uh, emotional distress because Tario was taken to jail and not a hospital. I'm reporting in Greenville, Addie Hampton, 7 News. Uh, Addie, there was some talk today in court about Tario Anderson possibly testifying, and they've ruled against that. Is that the understanding of what happened? Yes, Amy, that is the understanding. Uh, they brought him into chambers. Um, basically, they were saying that he had the mental capacity of around a 10-year-old. Um, that's what they do in cases with children. They bring them into the judge's chambers. They have a conversation and ultimately decide whether or not he was fit to stand trial, and ultimately that judge saying that he was incompetent and should not testify before the jury, Amy. All right. Addie Hampton, continuing our coverage.